friends just finished off this tasty little beverage here. Uh, it was in the fridge, there's a few of them. J2O Spritz, apple and elderflower. Now before the keyboard warriors start, it's a soft drink. I don't touch alcohol. I think anybody who knows me knows that well. But just drinking this nice little beverage uh, out of the fridge, lovely and refreshing, a little fizzy drink in a glass bottle. Hard to beat uh, a nice soda or a soft drink on a warm day like this. But just before I say anything more about this bottle, I've been reading recently through the book of John, John's Gospel, and what a wonderful gospel it is. It begins with those great words from the Saviour to his disciples who are discouraged. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And so he speaks about heaven. He speaks about going to prepare a place for his disciples that brings us to the cross where the Lord opened the way, his resurrection, his ascension into glory. And then he gives them a promise, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And as the conversation or the discourse to his disciples continues in the upper room there, he makes mention of the coming comforter. He says, and if I go, I will send another comforter. And that comforter speaks of the Spirit of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is the great comforter of his people. But since he is leaving his people to go back to heaven and home and to intercede for them at God right, God's right hand, he gives them this promise of the Spirit. And the Spirit of God is the comforter, the paraclete, one who draws alongside us to comfort us, to encourage us, to counsel us, to guide us, to lead us into all truth, to glorify Christ in our lives, to empower us to live the Christian life. And what a wonderful ministry the Holy Spirit has in the church and in the world and amongst the people of God. And as the Son of God begins to develop this great theme of the coming comforter, the Spirit of God coming in his fullness upon the church, he says in verse number 14 of John's Gospel, uh, verse 20 of John 14, At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Christ speaks to his disciples, gives them the essence of really what a Christian is, ye in me, and I in you. So the Christian is in Christ, but Christ is also in the Christian. We are in God, and God is in us. We are indwelt by the living Christ, and yet we find ourselves in him. And I thought, how could you possibly conceive of a truth like that? How could you get a truth like that into your heart and mind that this immense God, this majestic God, this infinite God who fills eternity dwells in us and at the same time we dwell in him. And I just was thinking about this, this bottle. Take the lid off the bottle, empty its contents out or drink them, the bottle becomes empty. And whenever we come to the Lord and become as those who are empty, he is able to fill us. But if I fill this bottle with water, cast it into the ocean, for example, and the bottle becomes filled with the sea water, and yet it finds itself in that vast ocean, that's a little bit like what it is to be a Christian. God fills us, Christ indwells us. That's what a Christian is. In Colossians, we read those words, Christ in you, the hope of glory. But while that bottle is filled with water and has all the properties of the ocean water inside it, as it is cast into the ocean, it is surrounded underneath and round about by the immensity of the waters of the Atlantic or the Pacific or the oceans of the world. And that little bottle dwells in the ocean and yet the ocean is found inside the bottle as well. And that's what it's like to be a Christian. Whenever we find ourselves in Christ, in him dwelleth the wholeness or the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We find ourselves in Christ in the immensity of his love, his mercy, his grace, his being. And yet the great mystery is that at the same time, Christ dwells within us by faith. And what a wonderful assurance that brings. What a wonderful security that brings. What a wonderful assurance that brings. And the Son of God says that whenever the Comforter comes, he will bring that wonderful reality into the lives of his people and into the lives and the life of the church. And I trust today that the comforter himself, whatever your need is, 
will come to your heart and comfort you and guide you and bring you to Christ and that you'll have this wonderful experience of being found in Christ and Christ being found in you. May God bless you. Read that chapter yourself just in these moments that are left. John chapter 14. See you next time, folks, and thanks for listening.